All right, you guys, I'm doing a recording of this video instead of a live, uh, which is a little bit awkward for me. I'm not going to lie. You know me, generally irritable. Normally, I'm coming at you live, covering live events. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that in case there was any problems with the audio or video, uh, that we are able to overcome that. Uh, with all of the changes happening and uh, people around Central Texas, uh, the internet is not what it used to be. So this is generally irritable, just calling out any weird technical audio or video glitches with the software. Uh, again, making sure that this video comes at you with as much information as high quality uh, sound and video as possible because we've been having problems with doing live streams. So, um, again, it's just a little bit of we, it's just a little bit weird. Normally I'm used to talking to you guys. I'm used to having conversations, having you participate. Uh, so it's what it is because this is too important a conversation to leave to chance and to leave to technical issues. Uh, many of you who have been watching my channel for a long time know that, you know, the reason I do what I do is to help facilitate an engaged and informed electorate. That is my purpose. That is what I believe I'm called to do, uh, with my life. And the reason why, the reason why an engaged and informed electorate is so important is not just uh, you know, casually to get some Republicans. Oh, we just need to make sure we get some good conservatives in there. It, it is not casual, ladies and gentlemen. It is literally life and death. Okay. Uh, you're not probably going to get your normal dose of laughter and jokes from me and kidding around, uh, because what, the topic of conversation today is it really is life and death. And, uh, I'm talking about human trafficking. I'm talking about child tra trafficking, sex trafficking. Uh, hopefully, um, over the next couple weeks, we'll have some, uh, uh, guests, additional guests on the show. Uh, I'm going to show you again a recording, an interview I did with an organization called Skull Games that does extractions of people who are being trafficked and they then have an additional organization they work with that helps with uh, restoring the life and rebuilding the life of the trafficking victims that they rescue. So we're going to revisit an interview with Skull Games. We're going to be talking about a new movie coming out called Sound of Freedom. It comes out next, uh, next week, actually, of from this recording date, July 4th, 2023. So the release date of Sound of Freedom, July 4th, 2023, because it is about securing freedom, not just for us as Americans, not uh, slaves as we just celebrated Juneteenth, but for the 30 million slaves that are on earth right now as we speak, okay? That is the estimated number of people who have been sold into bondage and slavery currently in 2023 on the face of this earth. Approximately 2 million of those are children. Children sold into sex slavery for pedophiles. Okay. So what we're dealing with today is very, very heavy. Uh, you're again, not going to get the same level of jokes as you're accustomed to getting from me. I, uh, wore my special. I used to be a liberal hashtag walk away t-shirt today. Shout out to my girl, Michaela and, Tr and Trina. Uh, they said, you know, Erica, we want you to highlight your 
walk away story a little bit more. And I said, you know, I actually have a couple of their shirts because while this should not be a partisan issue, it clearly is. And the reason I say that is because we have a Biden, the Biden administration, a Democrat president and a Democrat legislature, Congress, who believes that it is okay to uh, put black and brown and white people, but you know, they like to talk about black and brown bodies all the time as if like their souls are separate from their bodies, but that's another conversation for another day. We have Democrat lawmakers and Democrat administration that is complicit in human rights violations. What is going on on the southern border of the United States is and has been a human rights atrocity. When Donald Trump was president, I listened to the likes of NPR lie and say that de- that Donald Trump was a racist and that Republicans were racist for wanting to deal with the southern border. Okay? What our porous and and unprotected southern border is creating is an incentive structure for human traffickers to bring unaccompanied minors and other people into this country where they are being abused and sold into indentured servitude, slavery, and sex slavery. Okay. Now the Republicans are not doing enough. Let me be clear. Okay. Is my face clear? Let me be clear. Republicans are not doing enough, but at least Donald Trump had the balls to do something about it, regardless of what the mainstream media and all these other idiots were saying about him. So I would love for this not to be a partisan issue, but when I go home to Vermont after living in California, and Texas, both southern border states. And Vermont, let me remind you, you're a border state and you've seen a a, a multi-thousand fold increase in border crossings and border interactions in the last two years, 2022 and 2023 already. So you may have forgotten that, but we're a border state. Texas just happens to be the number one destination in the country for sex slavery. But that doesn't protect our sweet little Vermont, which is full of a bunch of white people from having sex trafficking rings broken up in the Burlington area in Shannon County. Or did you guys forget that? Did you, did you forget about the Asian nationals that were found sex slaves being trafficked in South Burlington? Oh, did we forget about that? That's right, because I had the likes of my white liberal bosses, women I used to call my mentors, tell me they wished I had never moved to Texas and shame me for having become a conservative. Those people think that they're better than me now. Those people think they're better than you now. And they are the exact people who say that they care about Black Lives Matter and they care about the people on the southern border who are coming from South America. You don't care about them. And the evidence is that you let 85,000 unaccompanied children, minor children, not even teenagers, 85,000 children go missing into the interior of our country. What do you think has happened to them? You think they're with their families and loving homes, all you sweet white liberals? No, they're probably being, uh, what's the YouTube language for it now? Cause you can't, you can't say the actual words because YouTube will restrict your video. So fans of the playground are now allowed to have their way with children Thanks to all of you sweet, kind liberals. So again, I'm using really strong language. You guys, I normally try not to be so divisive, 
but this really is unfortunately a one party issue. Republicans are the only ones standing on this issue. My libertarian friends, I got to call you out too. My little, my sweet little open border libertarians. Okay. This is why when people ask me, Erica, what's the difference between you? Like, why are you not fully a libertarian? Why do you identify more as a Republican? Because the libertarians who are for open borders, yeah, guess what? Y'all are also responsible for fans of the playground having their way with children because you don't think borders matter because you don't think law enforcement matters. I am not super happy with law enforcement these days. I'll just be honest with you. There is a lot to be left desired. The more I learn about the corruption, in the FBI, the CIA, in many police departments, I will say that not all of them are the same, but, uh, whoo, I'm not going to sit here today and mince words because children's lives are on the line. People's lives are on the line. And so I'm not going to get cute today. We're not going to get we're not going to use euphemisms except for where to not get dropped off of YouTube and off the internet. I'm going to call out all the people that I know that can be called out. And I don't care if you might normally be my ally. I don't care if I'm offending you. I don't care because anyone who would allow children to be victimized You need to search your heart. And if you, especially if you call yourself a Bible believing Christian, if you call your, yourself a spiritual person, a person of faith, I don't care what you call yourself and you allow children to be victimized. Uh, I have to question where, uh, where your beliefs, your thoughts, and and your and any sort of moral foundation you have comes from again i hate to say it this is why i identify more with republicans than libertarians and i understand there's the mises caucus which is what i would probably consider myself a part of but if you're a libertarian and you support open borders i do not support you and it's a and it's a big reason why i do not support the party um and the candidates. Joe Jorgensen would have been a fine candidate had she not supported open borders as an example. And, uh, and if she was not so pro abortion, sorry, team L you guys are going to probably get mad at me, but I told you I was pulling no punches today. So here it is next week. Sound of freedom comes out. Let's see, I'm going to share my screen here. Do, 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 do. I want you guys to watch the trailer for Sound of Freedom. I'm going to watch it together. Sound of Freedom coming out. This is the true life. This is a this is a movie. There's also a documentary about uh, Tim Ballard, right? That's his name, Tim Ballard guy who uh, does extractions, former CIA agent who works. Uh, and again, you guys, you got to wonder. Oh, I'm going to save it. Let's watch the trailer together here. Let's, uh, let's pull it up. All right. Angel Studios. I don't think I can do this job, Tim. As soon as I lay down, all you see are those kids' faces. How long have you been doing this? Twelve years. How do you do it? It is the fastest growing international crime network that the world has ever seen. 
It has already passed the illegal arms trade, and soon it's going to pass the drug trade. Senor Timoteo, tu rescate me es verdad. Quizá puedas ayudarme a encontrar a mi hermana. Imagine walking into a room right now, seeing an empty bed. We're Homeland Security. You know we can't go off rescuing kids in Colombia. This job tears you to pieces. This is my one chance to put those pieces back together. We're talking about extracting an 11-year-old girl from an army of rebels. Not just her. I'm talking about rescuing hundreds of kids. She could be a block down the road, or she could be in Moscow, Bangkok, L.A. Over two million children a year are being sucked into the deepest recesses of hell. If we do nothing, someday it's going to reach the likes of you. This is your daughter. Wherever I go, I find my way home. If you would like to help us expose the horrible reality of human trafficking by bringing this true powerful story to the big screen, express interest now at angel.com slash freedom. All right, you guys. So this movie is going to be airing in over... Uh, in about 2000 in about 2000 uh movie theaters next next week July 4th or excuse me July 4th 2023 so you can go to let me share my screen again you can go there are multiple pages you can go to but you can go to angel.com here let me share my screen again Let's see share a different different window okay so if you go to sound of freedom excuse me angel.com okay so angel.com it'll take you to a place where you can put in your zip code and see where it's playing near you so this we already have our tickets benjamin and i are going to go see this movie next week you know we're going to be doing a film review. Uh, it's going to be cross-posted between my channel and is it going to be on um, a, a darker perspective, Austin Action Fest? Where's it going to be? You don't know yet? Okay. So we, we definitely know we're going to be streaming on multiple channels. If you're in Vermont, you can put in your zip code. Okay, so Burlington. Uh, it's playing at really it's only playing at essex cinemas in vermont i already looked at this uh shameful shameful the fact that it's only playing in one theater in vermont and none of these other theaters are covering it shameful essex cinema you have my heart you will have my money from now on whenever i am in vermont and i go to the movie theater you're getting my money, not uh, anyone else. So just for the record, if you are in Vermont, if you're in Chittenden County and you go to the movies, go to Essex Cinemas uh, because they are apparently the only movie theater that cares enough to highlight this problem and what is going on in our back door. Because remember this, guys, this is not just in texas this is not just in the south this is in your backyard in vermont so enter your zip code you can find out where it's screening july 4th and buy your tickets uh you can buy your tickets get them here okay pre-sale your tickets buy your tickets Oh, Essex Cinema, it's playing on Monday, July 3rd. Why would they do that? That's when... That's really stupid. Oh, no, wait. Okay. Nope. 
You guys, I'm okay. I'm talking smack. Okay. It's on the fourth too. Okay. I just picked the wrong day. All right, good. So it's not just playing when they do the fireworks. Although, are, is Burlington doing fireworks anymore? The, Burlington probably says fireworks are racist because America is racist or something. I'm sure. They're a bunch of nonsense people. Go to angel.com, pre-sale your tickets. It's already outselling Indiana Jones for next week. You guys, okay? This movie is so important. The pre-sale tickets are already 25% higher than Indiana Jones. Let's make sure we do even better than that. All right, let's see. I want to highlight to another video, you guys. Let's see. We're going to share. We're going to share another, another screen here. Generally irritable, you guys. Uh, da, 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 da. let's see. My interview with Skull Games. So, this is an interview that I got to do with an organization who does extraction. So, when we were at America Fest in uh it last last fall they were one of the guests of turning point usa so i just want to give a big shout out to turning point usa they are uh, an amazing organization that gives opportunities not only to outlets like mine that are growing uh to to have access to these folks to get them shine but they had tables they had uh they had their own spot in Media Row. These uh, Turning Point USA goes out of its way to highlight organizations, particularly that support and protect the vulnerable, defend the vulnerable, you might say. So I want to give a special shout out to Charlie Kirk and the ambassadors over at Turning Point USA for the work that they do, uh, really providing an opportunity for us to find folks who do this kind of work so uh you know this is a it's a 17 minute long video you guys and so i'm not going to play the whole thing for you but i get to interview michelle block and samantha summers so one of them is one of the folks who works on the team so what they do is they collect the information, they do the research, they do everything needed to, to put together and cultivate the information for law enforcement to go in and not only arrest the bad guys, but save the victims, okay? So it's on my YouTube channel, it's in the Turning Point USA, uh, folder is it in the Turning Point USA folder? Am I making up lies? Uh, victimized when they were children, yes, perhaps. Children That's correct. And so there's this: how do we how do we get to the root of why people were either vulnerable to be getting trafficked in the first place? Why did they think that this was the way to be? You have to get to the root of that stuff, or you don't actually help them recover. And exactly. survive. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And that is a very important part. And I think a lot of times people like to focus on the kicking down of a door, <laughs> you know, and, and the sexy and, part and yeah. grabbing them out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nobody wants to do my job. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to get in the muck and the mire, guys. So and, and it stinks. You know, I've been out of the sex industry now for 20 years. I still need services, resources, support, you know, emotionally, yep. mentally, and spiritually. Yes. And so it's really important to be invested for the long haul with them. Because if not, that just makes them re-vulnerable again to go back into the sex industry. Well, and this is what this is one of the things, you know, I celebrated 13 years in recovery this year. Oh, and awesome. thank you, thank you, thank you. And but it is that it's it is the 
it is the process, right? So you get into the 12-step recovery program. Well, I have to discover what it is that had me there in the first place. Then I have to get through the trauma that I caused to myself by acting stupid under, you know, the influence. And then you have, so it's like, the, the sexy part, right, is the is the door kicking down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the hard part is the is the putting the human being back together. Right. Sure. And I think that's what a lot of times people don't understand the human aspect oh. of trafficking and sex work. You know, before we get or online. Yeah. So say very tech savvy and they're they're starting to groom that thirteen, fourteen kids and okay, the and the traffickers go. at your church this is and they're where... being groomed here this are is where I want you guys to or like the volume of well the, one the, versus the other the reality is is that is the people being sold for sex trafficking here are are your neighbors are is the person in your in your in your class at your church and they're being groomed online mm -hmm. and, and a lot of these kids and the and the traffickers are very tech savvy and they're they're starting to groom that 13 14 15 years old and they pose as the boyfriend Right and okay. So did you hear that, guys? We're not just talking about these sex trafficking rings coming across the southern border. Okay, that is a huge part of it. That is a huge part of it. But this is also happening to your neighbors. And this part, this part was so crazy to me. I I was shocked when I heard this. They separate them slowly and surely from their family. Your parents just don't understand. Oh yeah, and it's God. not just the kids. Okay, so when we're talking about groomers, okay, groomer. Okay. Two are from broken homes, and it's not just the kids who have heart, like, are um, unprotected and neglected. It's actually, uh, there's people out there targeting two-parent homes from Christian families. Yes. It, 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 it's, it's, it, it's a sign really? of right. Really? Yes. How, how much street cred? How much street cred do you have? Yeah. No, we are 100% oh serious. Oh my God. That is They are so... very, very vulnerable. Well, and if that is not, gosh, I don't know. Can I say this? You guys are have a religious piece. Like, if that is not evidence yes, of, of the fight of between good and evil. Yes. No, 100%. I mean, that is, is literally, evil. if they're saying we want to go yes. get Christian people, that is, I mean, that is like, that just sounds like the enemy talking right but there. But understand, oh, yeah. there's more shame in it for these young girls, these young boys. Oh How God. do you so go to your... it's easier to get them to be quiet, I Yeah. Thought. Where, how much shame is it oh in your gosh, church? You guys. Easier to get them to be quiet. So if you think about this, one of the things they interview pedophiles, you guys. They interview fans of the playground and they ask them, how do you get these kids? How do you groom them? Uh, there was recently a bunch of videos circulating around social media of this person talking about how normally they're looking for kids who are vulnerable uh they're looking for kids with no daddy in the home for kids that don't have strong parental figures who don't have the sort of protections that you would normally get from a father in a two-parent household so dads what are you doing in your kid's life are you a threat are you a threat to the fans of the playground who are looking at your kid like a potential traffic victim. What are you doing? What are you doing to protect your family and your children? What are you doing to help children in your community that are vulnerable? We talk a lot about all of the problems with the schools and how they're grooming people and and all these this and that and all of the problems what are you doing are you signed up to be a mentor with the boys and girls club are you uh signed up to be a mentor with catalyst collective or are you just uh, what they're calling now a dink right double income no kids person who thinks that you're better than everybody else just living your best life i see it every day you guys i'm an accountant i do people's books and they're and they're uh and i help them run their businesses i see it all the time people who make six figure incomes and do nothing for their community 
They donate nothing. They donate none of their time. Because they are so wrapped up in their own selves and their own selfishness to recognize that there are kids desperate for someone to be a mentor, to guide them, to show them, to show them how to be adults, human beings, how to be safe. We are literally leaving the vulnerable out to dry as a community and as a country. And if you're one of those people, I'm calling you out right now. I know people who feel really sorry for themselves, who have make tens of thousands, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, who are crying for themselves because they don't have dental care and they need a filling. You know exactly who I'm talking about in case you're watching. And I'm just really tired of it, you guys. Uh, I, I, uh, I wish I could do more. I wish we could do more. I wish I had one million dollars that I could donate to the, or to the, to there, there is in fact a person at our church who works on, uh, works for an organization that does extractions here in Texas. What if I had a million dollars? What if we had so many sponsors and subscribers to my channel that we could donate a million dollars to that organization to go help those kids? What if I had enough people who were willing to, um, I don't know, buy my accounting services that we had so much extra money and overflow that we could help those kids. But so many Americans right now are either navel gazing, feeling sorry for themselves, and focusing on their own self pity and how hard their life is. First world problems. What are you doing? That's my question. I don't even know where to go with this, you guys. I am. I am so angry. Do you know that the lifespan of these children is only two to five years? Two to five years before they're used up and discarded and harvested for their organs. Yes, that is a real thing. Uh, yes, that is true. No, this is not some crazy conspiracy theory that you hear from the likes of, uh, you know, fill in the blank on rumble or, you know, that's been banned off of YouTube. It's true and it's real and it's documented by our own government. They literally kidnap girls who are mentally uh, handicapped, particularly, and they take them by force repeatedly to produce babies that are then harvested for their organs. The, the heart of a newborn baby sells for something like $250,000 on the black market. We know they're doing it in China. We know they're doing it to the Uyghur Muslims. Why is it so surprising that it's also happening and being caught on the southern border of the United States? These camps are raided and they find little girls and babies.
Look, I don't want to be like that stupid reporter lady who's always crying on TV. I don't remember her name. She's on like CNN or MSNBC and she freaking cries all the time like a dummy about dumb stuff. But if this does not break your heart and cause you to want to do something, I do not know what will. <sighs> okay, so this guy, Tim ba uh, Ballard, is the chairman of the Nazarene, is it fund? share screen again again sorry this isn't my normal fun jovial video you guys so tim ballard this uh movie that comes out next week let's make sure it's on the stream he's the chairman of this organization Yes, it was started by Glenn Beck. You guys might hate Glenn Beck, but at least he's doing something. What are you doing? So the Nazarene, uh, their mission. Let's see, let me get back to the page. So they work on trafficking. Uh, Tim Ballard is, I believe, the chairman. So, uh, Glenn Beck is the founder. Tim is the chairman. It's a organization that helps people. Uh, actually they were the organization. They, I think they got out, uh, several thousand people from the middle East, from Afghanistan when the war, when we botched the departure from Afghanistan, or did we forget another blunder human rights atrocity by the Biden administration. How this guy is still being floated as a presidential candidate is beyond me. I, I you know, I, I'm not sure if I can say he's the worst president in American history because we've had some pretty, pretty terrible uh, presidents in American history, but he is at least in the top three. So ISIS um let's see they are uh, uh they have a big trafficking ring it's one of one of the ways they make money and fund themselves um so if you guys go they've got stories here of folks who have been rescued uh the work they do around the country um saving people go donate okay you want to not be a loser donate donate to them uh what's the other organization we've donated to in the past benjamin operation underground uh again skull games is another one so get involved Donate, uh, send people, Ooh. highlight this, share this, share this the power video of one, oh. one person having an idea, sharing it with someone else. Where's this audio? Them using their skills involving others. That's when the collective matters, when we are all so, working as okay, individuals Glenn, with our own Shush. skills. Shush, Glenn. Glenn I'm, talk I'm talking, Glenn. <clears throat> Donate. Help. Buy something. Okay? Buy a t-shirt. Share the mission. Share this video. Like, share, subscribe comment <sighs> do something do anything for god's sake
Some of you have heard that I have the pleasure of producing and co-hosting a show called Of The People. We are on the radio in New Hampshire, Thursdays at 9 a.m. We're on Rumble. We're on YouTube. We're on the socials. Check out Of The People with Robert Chernin. And we are going to be discussing this topic this week. Uh, we're also going to be having on Yako Buyans in the coming weeks. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have him on both Generally Irritable and Of The People. We're waiting to hear about that. Uh, some of you guys have heard about him probably. He is pretty well-known pro-life advocate and also big, um, big, big, big on helping people fight against trafficking. So be on the lookout for that. Again, check out our episode of Of The People, the June, uh, excuse me, yeah, June 29th episode. Let me share my screen. So Yako is going to be on at least of the people, but probably also, uh, hopefully also generally irritable in the coming weeks. Big, big um, advocate, again, pro-life, pro-family, and anti-trafficking. Uh, where's his picture he's on here? Mm-hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Oh, book. He's got a book. Buy it. Go check it out. Let me see. About us. This is another person, again, an organization that works on trafficking. I highly recommend that you look into what they do. Here we go. Uh, you guys have seen this guy. Okay. You guys have seen this guy on TV. You've, you've seen him on uh, YouTube all over the place. Uh, he's doing work. Who, what else am I missing? Who else am I missing that we've been talking to? Uh, ch go to, go to my channel videos. Look for the videos from the how many more rally. Uh, Texas is actually working towards changing the laws here. So Texas wants to actually, let's see, we're going to go back to my channel too. So the state of Texas is actually looking to militarize the border, which you know, given the way that I feel about law enforcement scares me a little bit, but what they've been able to identify is that the law enforcement mechanism, the law enforcement model is not working to address the trafficking. It is not working. So what Texas legislature wants to do is call these, the traffickers, uh, terrorist organizations. So rather than dealing with this from a law enforcement perspective, and waiting for the do nothing Joe Biden administration, the Texas legislature wants to militarize the border and call these traffickers what they are, which is terrorist organizations and treat them as such. So we would get, we would be taking back the national guard. So the national guard would come back under the, um, uh, the Texas governor who would then treat this as essentially a military action to close our border, to stop these traffickers, to lock them up and throw away the key. I am about that. I am for that. Let's see. Where's those videos for my, so the how many more rally was at the Texas state legislature. And uh, that was a little while ago. Mark Meckler from Convention of States actually was the host. So we've got up his talk. 
We've got Laura Logan's talk. We've got Chip Roy, Congressman Chip Roy. We got we have a few other ones. Hypercut up here. Okay, let's see. You want the national anthem, don't you? Ted Nugent doing the national anthem to get us started. He has brought U.S. citizens killed at the hands of illegal aliens all over our country. Little girls being raped by the cartels. They're the ones that have to explain why an illegal alien is trying to rape their 13-year-old daughter in their own bedroom in Michigan. Why there right now is a big international theft ring of illegal aliens from South America in New York and Connecticut. Do you guys know that nearly daily, but probably at least three, four times a week, we get uh, child abduction amber alerts on our phones here in Texas. Almost daily, but at least a few times a week. Just side note. Somebody's distributing these flyers out there. Oh, yeah. And oh, these yeah. flyers... There was some fake neo-Nazi distributing fake neo-Nazi propaganda at the, at the rally to try to discredit the people at how many more? What disgusting people? What kind of Our disgusting person flyers. does this? What do we think of white supremacists here? Hell no! So if you're out there and you're distributing these... You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You don't belong here. You're not welcome here. And you need to get the hell out of here right now. They will come. These people will come to our rallies. Rallies like how many more? And distribute white supremacist propaganda to try to discredit the work being done to save children. What kind of person does that? Oh, is it one of, uh, uh, is it, this is it just another FBI, uh, PSYOP or whatever the crap is when, uh, when, when there's a rally and there's some proud boys there, and then you've got these other supposed neo-Nazi groups all in khakis who wear masks, uh, starting fights. Yeah. Sound familiar? see uh the laura logan speech you guys w made me sick i'm not gonna lie uh it shocked me and horrified me laura logan emmy award-winning journal uh is an award-winning journalist and war correspondent and uh and she's the one who said oh texas you know we're the greatest country on earth but we're the greatest country on earth that allows children to be trafficked Oh, no, I said country because technically we're a country, right? Not kidding, you guys. This is the thing. Texans were so Texans are so fiercely prideful about being Texas that, you know, oh, we're the best country on earth because of what, what is it? We're incorporated or some crap what is the rule. Like we're the only state in the union that can actually secede. We're the only state in the union that actually has our own power grid. All that stuff that's real cute until you know that we're also the the place where children are most likely to be taken advantage of lone star state i highly highly encourage you if you guys are going to do nothing at least watch laura logan's speech and you got, like I said, you got Chip Roy, you got a bunch of them. Go to Generally Irritable on YouTube, on all the socials, check those out. Because here's the thing, you guys, if I'm covering it, if I, little bitty Generally Irritable, can get a press pass to cover these events and show you that this is real, why isn't mainstream media covering this more? Why isn't the news covering this more? Why didn't you hear about the sex trafficking rings in South Burlington getting broken up on WCAX more? 
Why don't you hear about the increase in border crossings? Why don't you hear that we are always, this country, the United States, is in the top three every single year for being the consumers and producers of child prawn? Why don't we hear about that? Why is this not being blasted from every street corner who benefits that's the question we have to ask ourselves and that's what i'm going to close with i meant for this to be a quick video you guys 20 30 minutes i really did but i want you to i want you as i close and as we close here i want you to think about who benefits from the victimization of these children when we have an administration and a media that allows it to happen and then doesn't cover it. When we have Epstein's Island and we know that he did not, he did not end his own life. We have to be asking who benefits when Ghislaine Maxwell can go to jail, but his, but the book of business is still not revealed and the Johns buying those girls and going to that island is not revealed. Who benefits? If this does not drive you to the ballot box to get rid of every single Democrat, I do not know what will. And again, I wish this was not a partisan issue. And I'm sure that there are some Democrats out there who don't think that this is okay and will fight bat, bat, uh, who fight it or do something, but they're too much of a coward to fight their own party in the legislature. Congress is allowing this to happen. Democrats are allowing this to happen. The Biden administration is allowing this to happen. Who benefits? I'm asking you today, do something. If you're not going to get politically active, at least donate to one of the many different organizations I highlighted today. Look, look them up, look up anybody who does anything, uh, find an organization to support and do something. Even if it's donate $10 a month or $50 a year to end the suffering of a child. I'm asking you today, please. Do something. See you guys next week with the movie review.